S11, I was too harsh on you. At the very least, most stops have the pedestrian bridge, something that the B21 and D11 don't have. It seems to run every 20 minutes now, but sometimes, usually at weekend nights, it still runs every 30 minutes. Please do not run buses every 30 minutes at night. There are a lot of people going home from Central Park, and the buses can be full as T11 buses at rush hour. But at least there's live bus tracking, so see it here. Same thing with the T11. You're trackable, you do have better non-BRT shelter than the S11, having the eastern terminus under the highway is a good move, and being able to use the bus lanes in Petamboran on the way back to Tangerang gains points. However, I feel bad for those waiting in Kota Bambu and Kemanggisan. I'm sorry but this looks miserable. This is also the only line I've tried somewhat close to rush hour, and it's alright. No more people pushing each other, though this line being shortened to Petamburan now means that the 10H and especially the 3F have extra passengers. B tier. The D21 runs every 15 minutes, uses nice electric buses, but we all know you're a regular non-BRT line in disguise. Seriously, you don't even enter the highway, and it seems that you only enter the park to make a U-turn. B tier. S21 and S22 gets B tier now due to mostly functional live bus tracking, but the S22 does lose some points due to Kampung Rambutan's let's just say poor reputation. The S21 has a reputation for being overloaded at rush hour, though I have not tried the S21 at peak hours. Also, Pondok Indah BRT Shelter desperately needs an upgrade. This tiny thing serves a mall that's so big it's spread around 4 buildings and the walk from one end of the complex to another is 800 meters long. The B11 is also trackable, but it pains me to see the now unused BRT shelters in Bekasi. B tier. I like how the buses wait in the terminus. If you're gonna wait 15 to 30 minutes, at least you're waiting inside an air conditioned bus instead of outside. Now to the ones that I have not reviewed in the last video. B21, your bus stops are terrible. No shelter, no pedestrian bridge, and your terminus's Google Maps reviews can only be described as concerning. C tier. 7C, the only line here to use the nicer two-door buses alongside the single-door Hino buses. Some people have said that this line uses bendy buses but I never saw them. Also, most Metro Trans buses in all other lines can now go 80 km per hour, but the 7C, based on my limited experience, seems to be capped at 60 km per hour, at least the two-door buses. Funnily enough, despite being formally marketed as a regional bus line, this line only leaves Jakarta for a short moment to turn around and all the stops are actually inside Jakarta. But it does feel like a regional line since it goes in the highway. Chawang Central is a large and modern bus shelter with plenty of connections and Jibubur has this shelter along with access to Jibubur Junction Mall, even Buperta has tents so you do get some weather protection. Overall really nice bus shelters, it is also trackable and I have seen 10 minute frequencies from this line, though most of the time it's gonna be 20 minutes. A tier. T12, Tomang Raya is a nightmare in the evening rush hour. If I had to make a top 5 most congested roads in Jakarta video, the westbound section of the road will make it to the list. Also, the bus tracking in Google Maps here is a bit hit and miss, but tracking still works in the new Trans Jakarta app. C tier. D11, the fact that there's no bus shelter in front of Persona Square Depok is morally wrong. I've tried this line before live bus tracking was a thing and was left waiting 20 minutes in the rain. And if all that wasn't enough, this line uses single door Damri buses on weekends, removing the main advantage of Lodekisasi, which is using the nice Metro Trans buses. But the bus tracking does work, so D tier. Now to Royal Trans S13 and S14. Both lines are running well below capacity due to the simple fact that it's too expensive. 35,000 rupiah. I'm sorry, but with that kind of money, Royal Platinum can get me from Gading Serpong to Klapa Gading. The S14 has the nice feature of being considerably faster than the Damri line, as it directly goes to West BSD on the way back. No crawling along congested East BSD here. Meanwhile, the S13 gets stuck in Tomang traffic. 20 minutes just to enter the highway. Also, unless you get the very front seat, legroom is rather tight, so the S14 gets B tier and the S13 gets C tier. For both lines, my suggestion is to lower the price to around 25 to 30,000 rupiah and get more departures. I'm thinking buses every 15 to 20 minutes. The S13 should also be extended to Monas. Or alternatively, since Transjakarta these days seems to be more interested in making Royal Trans lines than regular Trans Jabodetabek lines, run Royal Trans buses off peak and on weekends. It doesn't have to be frequent, you can have departures every 45 to 90 minutes off peak. This is so that you don't cut people off transit. Gading Serpong has 120,000 people. Surely you can find a couple dozen or hundred people who want to go to Jakarta and back on a Saturday or Sunday or off-peak on a Tuesday afternoon. 
I've also changed my mind a bit on Algramas' Tikarang Porres Plawat line, but I think that line deserves its own video. But basically, waiting 30 minutes to get from Tangerang to East Jakarta is a whole lot less painful than waiting 30 minutes to go to Veteran South Jakarta. Now, as promised in part 1, what to do when you want to serve an area with bus service but there isn't enough demand to justify once every 15 to 20 minute all day service. Again, we can look to Toronto's Go Bus for wisdom. Go Bus Line 36 runs every 20 to 30 minutes at peak and once an hour off peak in both directions. Yes, with this kind of frequency, you do need to check and adjust your activities to the schedule. But even then, this is still useful for nearly every kind of trip. You can use it to go to work in the morning, or go at noon because you took the afternoon classes for university, or go in the evening to hang out with friends in the city at night. How do we apply this to Jakarta? Take Damri's DR connection line that goes from SDC to Labak Pulos MRT station. You could make a schedule that looks something like this. 30 minutes at peak and 60 off peak. Buses should run once every 60 minutes all day on weekends. This line only requires 3 buses at the minimum. In fact, Damri already allocates 2 buses for this line. Even with 2 buses, you can still sustain 90 minute frequencies. Not great but still very useful. If you want to get people to use transit, you need to give people the same freedoms they have when driving. And that means being able to go at any time of the day. With so many universities, offices, hotels, hospitals, malls, and other businesses in West BSD and Gading Serpong, there's huge untapped demand for bus service here. And also, most of us shouldn't be driving anyway. As someone who regularly checks on Gading Serpong updates Instagram, most people who live in Gading Serpong do not know how to drive and keep crashing their cars in increasingly unique ways. 